Hello everyone, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. If you have several damaged LED bulbs at home, then this time you can use them for a very interesting project. Since in light bulbs what usually burns out most frequently are the LED diodes. For example, in this case I have several LEDs that are burned out. Just like on this other board, I have these LEDs that are burned out. And this is why we usually throw away our LED bulbs. However, in most cases, the electronic board usually remains intact. For example, here we have two types of LED bulbs. One in which the LEDs are separated from the electronic board, and another in which the LEDs are next to the electronic components. Therefore, these types of LED bulbs are more complicated to handle. So, for this project, we're going to use this type of LED bulbs, in which the electronic board is separated. For example, here I have other LED bulbs, which also have damaged LEDs. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the circuit board. However, keep in mind that for this project, we're going to use the lower power LED bulbs. For example, here I have a 6 watt one, and here I have a 12 watt one. So for this project, it's best to use the 6 watt one instead of the 12 watt one. So the first thing we will do is remove the electronic board from the bulbs. So let's move on to that. Okay, now we have the electronic board. And as you can see, we have two cables for the alternating current and two output cables for direct current, positive and negative. Now you can see that on the circuit board, we have a 1.5 ohm resistor. This resistor controls the output current so that the LEDs shine brightly. The LED strip needs 100 milliamps or a little more current to operate. However, for this project, we don't need that amount of current. Therefore, we have to reduce the current by changing the value of this resistor. So, that's the first thing we're going to do. But before moving on to the theoretical part, let's talk a little about what the project is about. The intention is to use this type of circuit board for LED bulbs to power a wall clock like this one here. Since these clocks use one, two, or even three batteries. So, by using this type of circuit board, we'll no longer be using these types of batteries. That would be the intention. Therefore, we need a little theory to see how to power a wall clock using this electronic board. So, to understand that, let's move on to the theoretical part. Okay, a little theory. Here we have the circuit of the electronic board, in which we can see that we have two capacitors. And these would be those capacitors. We also have a coil. There we have the coil, and we have a resistor, which is what we need to modify. And we also have the LED strip, which would be this one here. Now we need to modify the current that reaches the LED strip. That is, we're going to lower the current to a value suitable for our wall clock. And how do we do that? Well, that will depend on the formula we have here. 
where it tells us that the peak current is equal to 0.373 divided by the resistance on pin 4. After that, we can calculate the current to the LEDs, which would be half the peak current. So, if we substitute the resistance we have on the board into the formula, the peak current will be equal to 0.373 divided by 1.5 ohms. This will equal 248 milliamps. Therefore, the current to the LEDs will be equal to half the peak current, which would be 124 milliamps according to the formula. That's the current reaching the LED strip. But that's a lot of current for our wall clock. So, we need to reduce that current a little. How much do we need to reduce that current? Well, quite a bit. To do this, we'll have to modify the resistor on pin 4 to a higher value one. For example, if I put in a 10 ohm resistor like this one here, let's see how much the current would be. The peak current will be equal to 0.373 divided by 10 ohms. Therefore, the peak current will be 37 milliamps. And the current to the LEDs will be half that. That's 18.5 milliamps. That would be the current we'll get if we use a 10 ohm resistor. That current is more than enough for our wall clock to work without problems. Therefore, the first thing we're going to do is replace that resistor with a 10 ohm resistor. So let's do that first. Okay, now that we have our modified electronic board, let's see what other materials we need to connect it to our wall clock. We'll need a 330 ohm quarter watt resistor. A 10 volt 1 watt Zener diode. A 1.8 volt or 1.5 volt voltage regulator. That would be all the material. Now let's see how they should be connected to our wall clock. First, we are going to have our electronic board. in which we are going to have positive and negative. We have positive and we have negative. Then we connect the 330 ohm resistor. And then we connect the 10 volt, one watt Zener diode. Now the voltage regulator would run in parallel to the Zener diode. It would be the LM1117 of 1.5 volts or 1.8 volts. Now the voltage regulator would give us 1.5 volts, and from here, we connect it to our wall clock. Those would be the connections. 
But first, let's run the tests on a breadboard. And if the tests go well, we connect it to our wall clock. Very good. Now, let's test the voltage our circuit delivers. We'll measure the voltage across the Zener diode and at the output of the voltage regulator. For this, we are going to put our multimeter in direct current voltage at a voltage greater than 10 volts. We power the electronics board and measure the Zener diode. And there we have 10.5 volts. Now, we measure the voltage across the voltage regulator. And we have 1.8 volts. That voltage is more than adequate to power our wall clock. However, if you find a 1.5 volt regulator, you can also use it. Now we are going to measure the current consumption of the circuit. To do this, we turn off the power supply. We set our multimeter to DC voltage. We open the circuit. And with the multimeter, we close the circuit. We turn on the power supply. And we can see that we have 27 milliamps of current consumption. That 27 milliamp current is much lower than the original current consumed by the electronic board, which was much greater than 100 milliamps. That current was used to power the LED strip. So the power we're consuming is much lower than the original. So, with the tests done correctly, we can now assemble the circuit in our wall clock. So let's get to that. Very well. Now we're going to secure our electronic board with a little glue. Now we solder the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. Now we're going to test our clock. We turn on the power supply. And as we can see, our clock is working. Very well, guys. Here we have our wall clock working without any problems, as you can see. And it doesn't have any batteries. Here we have the electronic board for our LED bulb, and as you can see, it's working correctly. And the consumption is quite low, as you could see in the measurements. So, this way, you can use the electronic boards we have in the LED bulbs before throwing them away. And that's how the video ends. Now, don't forget that if you like the video, a like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye bye.